Lift me like an eagle, let me fly Up above the storm, you lift me high But if it be your will that I sail low You promised me you'd never let me go Let your will be my desire Let your spirit be my soul's fire Let your strength lift me higher And I will not be afraid Oh no, I will not be afraid Oh no, I will not be afraid We thank you, God, that when we are in you, there is no need to fear and that you give us power through the Holy Ghost. You give us love and you give us a sound mind. So may you renew that today in your word. We give you all the glory and praise forever. In Jesus' name, amen. I am so excited to get back into James today, you guys. We're going to be in the first chapter, starting in verse 12, going through verse 16. And we're going to be talking about enduring temptation today. You know, that word endure, I believe, is one of the most important words that we can know in the Bible. Not just know it, but live it. A basic definition of endure is to last or to experience something without giving in. When something is painful or difficult, you suffer through it, you endure, you press in, and you press on. And you know, God has a lot to say about enduring in the scriptures. Jesus himself brings it up when talking about the end times. We see it in Matthew chapter 24, starting in verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, and the love of many shall wax cold, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. We see Jesus speaking about this in Mark chapter 13, verse 13. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. We see the Apostle Paul telling Timothy, his son in the faith, to endure. Turn with me over to 2 Timothy chapter 4 in verse 5. He says, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. So endure, press on, don't give in, don't give up. And this specifically, he says, endure temptation. So don't give in. And this is really a perfect transition to our scriptures today in James chapter 1, because James is telling us to endure the same thing. Reading in verse 12, he says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. So when we're talking about temptation, we're talking about an urge or a desire in your flesh to do something that you ought not to do. So we want to endure temptation. We want to resist. And here it says, Blessed is that man. So moving on in verse 12, we see, For the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Now there's one other place in scripture that we see this same crown of life that's spoken of. We see it here in Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Let's turn there. Jesus is speaking here, and he says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. There's that word tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So here in the scripture, we see that same encouragement to persevere, to be faithful until the end. This is what it means to endure. And once again, here in the scripture, we are told that if we endure trial and temptation, if we are faithful to the end, we shall receive the crown of life. So going back to James chapter 1, verse 12, speaking of the man that endures, it says he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. And this is the key, that love him. You may be sitting here right now and you're like, Kathleen, I hear everything that you're saying and I believe this and I want to endure, but I'm not sure I have the strength or what it takes to get through some of these things that I might have to face. 
Like I mentioned before, the key to all of this is right here in that scripture. It's promised to those that love him and also to those that endure. Love him and endure. These two are very connected. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7, that God's love beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. So when we love God, like it says in James, and have the love of God dwelling in us, we have access to that power and that ability to endure. Love will enable us, which in itself is a product of the Holy Spirit of God which we can receive through faith in Jesus Christ. So no, we can't do it on our own or in our own strength, but we can through his. James chapter one, verse 13 says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. So this is important for us to know that though God will allow us to be tested, and tried. He will not tempt our flesh with evil. Satan does a fine job with that himself, and our flesh does too, for that matter. But we can never blame God for that. Instead, God makes a way for us out. If you haven't yet listened to my study, it's titled, How I Can Have Joy Through Trials and Temptation. I highly recommend it. It's just from a couple weeks ago. I'll go into much greater detail on how God gives us a way out. So if we find ourselves in a sinful situation, in a place or in an experience that we know that we ought not to be, like it says here, we can never turn and point our finger to God and say, he put me in this or he wants me here. But what usually happens is we can fall into temptation, whether on purpose or not. Sometimes we just fall into it. Like it says in James chapter one, verse two, Because we live in a fallen world. That can happen. And then also Satan will come to us. I mean, he came to tempt Jesus, the Son of God. He's definitely going to come our way and tempt us with evil. Let's read about how Jesus handles that in Matthew chapter 4. Verse 1, Then when Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, and when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, He was afterward hungered, and when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So this continues on, and Jesus is tempted three different times here in this part of Scripture. And he came to Jesus at his weakest point. I mean, he hadn't eaten for 40 days. I can't even imagine just how just exhausted he would be. And the same thing happens with us. Mark it down. Satan will come to you at your weakest point. He will press those buttons that he knows are your weak areas. He will tempt you in ways he knows that your flesh has a hard time. But every time we see Jesus He resists and he endures. And what happens after the third time? Satan flees. Let this be an encouragement to you that if you will resist and endure, he won't keep going. He will leave. Now, maybe not the first time, maybe not the second time. For Jesus, it was the third, but maybe he'll try again. Maybe he'll try again. But I promise you, Within a short amount of time, you resist, you resist, and you endure. He will flee, and he will go somewhere else because there's plenty more people out there. He knows time is short, and he doesn't want to waste time. So don't let him waste yours. If you will resist, if you will endure, Satan will flee. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. You may say again, how am I going to resist the devil at my weakest point? Well, remember We talked about the love of God and having it in us, giving us the power to endure. And we know this kind of love is a gift of the Holy Ghost, a fruit. Now read with me again right here in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, right before the temptation of the devil. It says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. 
Jesus was led up of the Spirit, walking in the Spirit. It says it again over in Luke chapter 4, verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Guys, there is a huge blessing in scripture that God is showing us right here. Number one, when you are full of the Holy Ghost, just like it says here, and number two, when you are walking in the Spirit, when we are filled and walking like this, temptation can come at us from any angle, by the world, by the flesh, by Satan, the great tempter himself, and yet standing in the midst of temptation, just like Jesus did when he came to him, you cannot be tempted at all. How is this possible? Again, being full of the Holy Ghost, which will bear that fruit of love, giving you the power to endure and being led of the Spirit, just like Jesus displays here for us. Galatians chapter five, starting in verse 24 says, and they that are Christ's, have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So again, we see the two, live in the Spirit and walk in the Spirit. And then go back to verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Remember when it said back in James that every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust? When we are walking in the Spirit, we're not going to fulfill that lust. But when we walk in the Spirit, it stops this whole progression of sin in our life. We won't even get to that point. And it's by His strength and it's by His power because it's through His Spirit. I love how it's put in Ezekiel chapter 36. Verse 27 says, And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. So God will do that for us and in us. However, I do believe that we have a choice every day whether we are going to submit to our flesh or we're going to walk in the spirit. Like it says in Galatians chapter 5, Verse 17, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. So there is that war. There is that battle between flesh and spirit. However, it goes on to tell us that if we are led by his spirit, we will overcome. This transitions us perfectly right back to James chapter one. Let's read in verse 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. James felt it very important to let us know where this road leads and urges us not to follow in its path. He shows us the progression of temptation when we submit to our flesh. Number one, the temptation itself. Number two, being drawn away of our own lust. Number three, the enticement. Take it, be part of this, receive it. Number four, the conception. When you give yourself over to the thought or the action. Number five, its offspring is sin. And sin, when it has its work, brings number six, consequences. Destruction of your life, of your body, of your soul, death. Everything that Jesus died to save us from, to set us free from, to give us a way out from. But here is the gift, you guys, that all that can stop at number one, at the temptation, just like it did for Jesus. Because when we resist and when we endure by the power of the Holy Ghost and being led by His Spirit, we are filled with the love of God that is put in us. And He will give us the power to do it. Satan will flee and we will overcome. I love you guys. I can't wait to pick up right here next week, same time, same place. I'll be here with my uke and study, and we will tune into God's word together. Be prepared.
to let